So, uh, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, aiming to demonstrate how to enhance business resilience with managed detection and response service by Palo Alto Networks and Subscuto. Before we start, just a few technical informations I would like to share with you. Webinar will be recorded and will be sent out for you uh, via email um, during the beginning of next week. Uh, and um, during the webinar, if you have any questions related to today's topic or the presentations, then you can submit it uh, in the Q&A function or the raise your hand function. We will collect the questions and answer after the presentations. I'm Peter Siladi, uh, Head of Sales and Business Development at Subscuto, and uh, please uh, let me introduce and welcome uh, the hosts of today's webinar uh, in the order of attendance, uh, namely Tudor Christia, uh, Regional Sales Manager East Air Europe um, Palo Alto Networks Cortex team, Norbert Schultz, uh, System Engineer uh, Palo Alto Networks Hungary, and uh, Gabor Sabo, my colleague from Subscuto, Head of Cyber Defense. Uh, first presentation um, will give you a brief overview of the evolution of technology uh, in the field of detection and response uh, technologies tools and how managed detection and response services can deliver uh, additional value on the top of these tools. The Norbert will demonstrate how Palo Alto Networks uh, built its security operations center on XDR, extended detection and response and automation technologies. And last but not least, uh, Gabor will uh, talk about the very essence of managed detection and response services and demonstrating a real life inspired uh, automated malware incident response uh, live demo. So let's jump into the middle and please Tudor start with your presentation. Thank you, Peter, for the introduction. Thank you to the Subscuto team. It's an honor for me to be part of this uh, webinar. Uh, I want to take a few seconds to congratulate and to uh, give kudos to Subscuto as a team, uh, the first managed detection and response partner that Palo Alto Networks has in uh, Eastern Europe. So for us, it's uh, something we should be proud of. Um, it's such a highly uh, skilled team that Subscuto has. And uh, the fact that um, uh, we are now partners, it's first an honor for us as a vendor. And second, speaks about the combined capabilities of Palo Alto Networks and Subscuto to enhance uh, the uh, detection and response capabilities of, uh, of your organization. And um, now uh, I want to start my uh, presentation. I also start the stopwatch to make sure I don't, uh, uh, I don't steal too much time. Uh, so what I want to cover briefly is um, about XDR as underlying technology for the managed detection and response that uh, Subscuto is offering to you. Very briefly, Palo Alto Network's unique approach. We definitely believe that in order to achieve proactive security, which should be the ultimate goal for a chief security officer, for the entire SOC team, or if the organization doesn't have a SOC, what should be the posture uh, when it comes to cybersecurity. We want to have a proactive approach, but in order to get there, you need technology, you need partners, you need processes. So uh, we believe that Cortex is at the heart, technology speaking, to enable you get to the proactive state uh, when it comes to cybersecurity. The complete picture of, of uh, Cortex is this one. First, we have to prevent everything that can be prevented, and this is achieved with the XDR. Moving forward, we acknowledge that not everything can be prevented. Uh, and if something can't be prevented, 
then we have to be very fast to detect and investigate what is happening. And XDR Pro plays an important role in this uh, aspect. Third, we want to automate the response and become smarter with each and every incident. And this is achieved again through a solution from the Cortex portfolio called Extended SOAR. And everything can be complemented with, uh, with attack surface management, uh, which is now called Expanse. Uh, Cortex is a holistic platform to help you deliver SOC services. We cover many, many use cases, EDR, NTA, uh, WEBA, uh, BIOC. So basically, when, when it comes to put a structure behind multiple use cases, we definitely believe Cortex, through the uh, breadth of solutions, can help you get there. This is just a sneak peek in our uh, SOC, our own SOC from California, but I don't want to steal the stage of my colleague Norbert, and uh, he will go through, through more details. But definitely we encourage you to have a look at our own SOC. We believe can be inspirational to each and every security operations uh, out there, no matter private or, or public sector. Moving a bit fast with XDR, which is uh, enabling first and foremost uh, Subscuto offering, this is the overall architecture. Uh, we have a central piece, which is data lake, nothing else than a big repository where we gather rich quality data from everywhere in the organization so that we eliminate blind, blind spots and we get full visibility into the entire organization. We collect data from network, from endpoint, from cloud, and from third-party uh, solutions like firewalls of Cisco, Checkpoint, uh, or uh, Fortinet. We put everything in the data lake, and on top of that, we run uh, machine learning algorithms, and we do all the intelligence in order to get to the point of achieving proactive security. Uh, Breaking down data and product silos. This is our approach with XDR. Uh, don't need to shop from multiple vendors. You have everything uh, with, with XDR because we cover all these important use cases. And you know, complexity is the enemy uh, for you if you want to be lean and proactive with cybersecurity. We want to help you get rid of the complexity. We want to help you uh, get a lean, a simple architecture that is way easier to operate and you increase efficiency in your day-by-day -day operations. Prevent, automatically detect, move very fast with the investigation and respond and adapt. These are the capabilities and look at the insane rapid pace of innovation with Cortex XDR. We are committed. We are here to disrupt the market and we prove this the way we disrupted the network firewall market when we launched our major nation firewall back in 2007, the same way we disrupted the EDR market which is an evolution of the EPP market, which is an evolution of antivirus market. So the market was ripe to be disrupted and Palo Alto Networks was the first vendor to put together network and endpoint into the so-called extended detection and response, simply put XDR. We are recognized as such uh, and we are proud of that to, to see that analysts uh, perceive our value. We help you reduce the risk of a breach. We definitely help you increase the SecOps efficiency and maximize your investment. And now, preparing uh, little by little the stage for, uh, for Subscuto, uh, what is the problem that Subscuto can help you solve? We do believe that security operations mainly are broken in so many organizations. Traditional security services are quite limited and a lot of vendor-based NDRs just lack visibility. So these are the problems that we see. 
And our approach is to enable uh, trusted M MDR partners to switch, to help you switch from before scenario to, to after scenario, which is way more, more elegant and is that comfortable position where you want to be. What Subscuto uh, uh, helps you achieve, of course, accelerate time to value, put security experience to work, highly skilled team that uh, uh, can share from their experience and can, can help you get there at the proactive level faster than if you would be alone in this journey. And not, not, uh, last but not least, budget to improve the mean time to detect and mean time to respond. XDR is limited, MDR is way, way more. XDR is just the technology, but you, it, it's not enough. You need to complement the technology with the right level of services in order for you to really get to the full value of, of the service. And Subscuto is perfectly complementing XDR technology. In a nutshell, Subscuto provides you history of differences and, and incident response expertise, uh, fast, accurate alert triage, prioritization, and investigation, comes with concrete detection, investigation, and response, everything backed by SLA, and also smart closed loop operations to bolster intelligence from its past experiences. So everything one shop, one stop shop from Subscooter. With that, I want to conclude my brief introduction. It took me eight minutes. So thank you for your attention. And now I will pass it over to my colleague Norbert. Give me a second. I'm quickly sharing my screen. Okay, I hope you see my presentation now. Yes, it's okay. Okay, great. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for the introduction for both of you, Tudor and, and Norbert. Thank you very much for the conceptual overview, which was presented by Tudor, and thank you very much for the technical holistic overview, which was presented by Norbert. I really hope we did not interrupt too much Norbert at the end. Uh, those things that he wrapped up, how quickly we can resolve an incident, uh, will be demonstrated at, part, at the end of my part as well as part of a, a, a live demo video. So I hope uh, nothing will be missed. Um, I think after reviewing the whole technology stack, the, 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 the conceptual ecosystem, which was uh, uh, developed by Palo Alto Networks for incident management, I would like to talk about how does cybersecurity incident management relate to business resilience at all. Uh, basically, that's the topic of, of, of my presentation today. Um, the, my talk will be in four major parts, um, and after that, there will be an open Q&A. But uh, already at this point of time, I would like to encourage you to, to submit your questions if you have any in the chat section. Um, because I really hope that uh, I'm just bringing up topics which will generate further discussions later on. So do not hesitate to, to, to raise any concerns or questions with regards to these topics. In the first part, I would like to talk about the role of information security and incident management in keeping business resilience. Then I would like to provide a quick overview on one potential way of gaining cybersecurity incident management capability um, in a form of an MDR service. After that, I will switch to the MDR service in action. Um, and um, finally, I would like to talk a few words about ourselves, about Subscuto, because I'm not sure we had the pleasure to meet all the attendees prior to this, to this webinar. So um, let's start with availability and, and incident management. Um, I think you have seen this many times before uh, this confidentiality, integrity, and, and availability triad. Um, this is what information security is about. You should see this triad as a three-leg chair. If any of the pillars of this tree is breached or, or, or lost, 
than, than information security and, and the corporate business data will suffer some kind of, of, of harm. Um, why I'm bringing this up? Because um, with regards to cybersecurity incidents, if we hear uh, a news about a cybersecurity incident, I think in most of the cases we associate to the loss of confidentiality because uh, we can hear in the news that uh, something has been stolen, for example, customer data or, uh, or, or uh, some credit card information, things like that. Um, in less cases, we start thinking about the loss of integrity or availability. Uh, but let's just think about the ransomware incidents, which are quite common, unfortunately, still nowadays. Um, if, if, if we suffer uh, a significant ransomware incident, the first thing which will uh, suffer is, is, is the availability, and that will end up in significant business harm. So when we talk about cybersecurity incidents, we can uh, see them and, and investigate the, 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 the cause and effects of the cybersecurity incidents from the availability point of view as well. Why we are bringing this up? Why we should talk about availability, business resilience in terms of cybersecurity incident management? Because first of all, I think if you need to gain uh, support from, from uh, C-level management, uh, why you should spend, spend on information security, um, then uh, getting their, their, their buy-in, if you talk about availability, is much easier because uh, this is not the first time that they face the need for, for, for spending some efforts on, on sustaining resilience and, and availability. Most of the, the organizations already spend significant efforts on business continuity management, disaster recovery planning, so they already really understand the, the impact if the availability is lost. Um, and um, in most of the cases, when you are trying to get some budget, for example, from C management, uh, C level management for information security, the first question you get is um, how you can quantify the loss uh, due to a cyber security incident or, or, or due to the loss of, of uh, information security. When we, when we talk about confidentiality or integrity aspects, it's not as easy to quantify as in case of, of, of availability. So certainly there is a need to, to, to investigate and, and, and look at the aspects of availability uh, with, with, with information security. Um, that's why uh, we should see how availability and, and the incident management relates to each other. Uh, on one hand, most of the organization already started to spend significant efforts uh, on building their protection, uh, having proper prevention and protection architecture solutions in place to avoid uh, harm to the business uh, due to the loss of information uh, security. On the other hand, they already started to work on uh, to prepare for the recovery. If there is a loss to information security, which is basically a cyber security incident, whenever you are uh, losing the, the confidentiality, integrity or availability of a corporate asset or data, that's what we call um, cyber security incidents in a layman's term. So most of the organizations already spending significant efforts on building the protection and preparing for the complete recovery. But there is a quite big significant gap between the two, which can be covered by incident management. It's not the good practice to, to build the prevention architecture and um, just wait until a cybersecurity incident escalates so you can use your best in class disaster recovery planning and business continuity management procedure so you can bring up the whole business operations from scratch. This is where the role of incident management comes in. If there is a cybersecurity incident, it will have to detect it as soon as possible and mitigate their business impact just to make sure that they are not escalating up to a point that business continuity management needs to be involved. So basically, incident management is filling the gap between traditional uh, protection building of, of cybersecurity and the, the, the recovery operations. Now, 
if we talk about talked about uh, what incident management is and what's the role of incident management uh, in the in the organizational aspects of cybersecurity, let's see a potential way of, of, of gaining this this kind of incident management capability. Uh, just in case of any other IT capability, if you would like to have it in-house uh, or, or if you would like to have that kind of capability within an organization, you have two major ways. You can build up that capability in-house or you can buy that as a service. So let's see what MDR is. Let's start with the abbreviation. Let's start with the M. It says managed, uh, which shows you that this is basically a, a service which is provided by external experts to your company. So this is the way when you are not building up the capability, spending significant efforts in-house to, to have this capability, you are just buying it as a service, gaining all the advantages of this kind of, uh, of, of uh, uh, solution. Then the second letter is D, which is the detection. It means the early detection capability of cybersecurity incidents. And R reflects to the response, which is uh, how to provide rapid response steps to minimize the impact of that particular cybersecurity incident. So MDR is a way of establishing incident management capability within your organizations as a service. Um, but then comes the question, what incident management capability is at all? Um, the answer is, I would say, very simple. Uh, let's reflect to the NIST lifecycle framework of, 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 of the incident management. Whenever we are talking about incident management, it means that we are following a well-defined choreography, a well-defined series of steps um, to drive through an incident through its, 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 its life cycle. The first phase is the detection, then the second phase is the response, and there is a non-technical phase, I would say, which is about coordination and communication. Um, in the detection phase, we, we focus on to, to, to know that something malicious is happening with our, within our monitored environment. In order to detect something, you need to continuously monitor the environment. That's the monitoring step. Once you detected something potentially suspicious or potentially malicious, you need to validate whether that's a false uh, alarm or that's a real incident. That's the detection phase. By that step, by the end of that step, you should have the potential incident pre-categorized. And at the triage phase, you are assigning the severity, how quickly the response step should be taken to, to, to mitigate the impact of that particular cybersecurity incident. Um, with triage, uh, you are completing the detection and you are entering the response phase with the containment step. If you have an incident, you have to isolate it as soon as possible to, to prevent further uh, business impact of that of that given incident. That's what containment is about. Uh, and it's also about to gain uh, the necessary amount of time for analysis. That's the point when we are using malware reverse engineering or forensics analysis techniques to really understand what is causing the cybersecurity incident so we can build a proper action plan how to fully remediate and close that particular incident. So by the end of the analysis phase, you should have an action plan that you will execute as part of the eradication and remediation phases um, so you can mitigate the, the cybersecurity incident. It's important to highlight that uh, the eradication and remediation steps are uh, mainly executed by the IT counterparts team. Uh, this is not done by the team who is doing the incident management. They are just providing the necessary uh, support uh, for these steps, uh, expert support, because during eradication remediation, for example, we are reinstalling infected end user devices. Uh, this is not a task which can be uh, done by an MDR service provider or by a security operations center. This is done by IT operations. Um, and like I said, there's a non-technical series of steps, uh, which, is, which is the coordination and communication. Um, as soon as we declare that we have a cybersecurity incident, we need to make sure that all the necessary parties are involved, uh, the, the necessary parties, stakeholders are informed, and the remediation activities are, are, are properly coordinated. That's what coordination and communication takes care about. That is what incident management gives you. 
this kind of series of steps that you can apply for any cybersecurity incident which is occurring within your environment. Now, now let's see how you get this incident management capability with the technology, uh, people and process layers. Um, you heard a lot about the, the proper technology layer, uh, which is the Cortex-XDR, the Cortex-XOR, uh, which is fully integrated with your existing IT or even non-IT, for example, OT uh, infrastructure. This gives the fundamental basis, the technical technology basis for an MDR capability. On top of that, with an MDR service, you are gaining the, the processes that will help you to go through the incident response chain that I just showed on the previous slide. And on the, on the top of that, as part of the service, you will get incident management experts as well, who will execute the given steps, the processes, leveraging, utilizing the, the, the world-class technology that you get with the Palo Alto uh, portfolio. Um, before jumping to the to the live demonstration, I would like to highlight one very important thing is that uh, in order to get the maximum out of an MDR service, you should have uh, certain uh, maturity, certain major coherent business processes in place already. Uh, even if you don't have anything, definitely incident management will help you somehow, but uh, you won't get the maximum value out of it unless you have proper service management already in place, you have proper business continuity management in place, you have proper risk management in place, because uh, all these processes are connected to, to, to each other. Um, and this concludes to the, to the uh, conceptual part of, of, of my talk. And let's quickly jump to the MDR service presentation in action. I would like to show you three scenarios that we pre-recorded for the demonstration. The first one will be, um, let's say, stormy situation when you need to handle a malware incident. Um, on the endpoint, as soon as the malicious file is executed, the Cortex-XDR uh, blocks it and it raises an alert to the Cortex-XDR console, which will automatically trigger uh, a respective playbook uh, in Cortex X or um, in the first phase of the playbook, the malicious uh, host and the endpoint is, is isolated. Uh, as you can see, the network traffic is disabled and the file is quarantined, so it seems to be disappearing from the endpoint. Um, there are certain cases when the uh, malicious file has to be further investigated uh, to prepare proper action plan for the remediation. Uh, for this particular activity, the first step is to collect the, the, the suspicious file, as you could see on the video. Then comes the malware reverse engineering, which is part of the uh, Subscuto MDR service by design. Um, the main goal of the malware reverse engineering exercise is to properly understand what the malware does, so we can properly plan the restoration activities and the remediation activities. As soon as it's confirmed that we are facing a malicious file, uh, then we will push back the collected IOCs to the Cortex XDR console and we will notify the IT counterpart teams, uh, for example, in a way of creating a service management ticket in JIRA, for example. Um, previously, you could see that there were no uh, custom IOCs created in the Cortex-XDR console, but by the end of the execution of this uh, playbook, you can see that the new IOC has been created, so we even automatically added new IOC rules for further detection, and the scenario is completed. So let's see the second one, which is less stressful. We need to handle a suspicious file within this scenario. Uh, the beginning is, is quite similar. Uh, the suspicious file is executed, the Cortex-XDR intervenes, and it raises an alert on the Cortex-XDR console, which, like in the previous case, will trigger an automated uh, handling workflow in Cortex-XOR. The first steps are quite similar. We are isolating the endpoint. As you can see, the network traffic is disabled and we are quarantining the, the malicious file as well. 
and just in the previous case we will collect the sample for further analysis um, as you can see the from the alerts from the console it's already quarantined and uh, these are the standard steps for the human analyst to to download the malicious sample for further analysis as soon as we complete with this step comes the reverse engineering again like i said this is by design part of the uh, mdr service offered by subscuto the main aim is to gather tactical and operational iocs to support further incident response like i said it might help to further tune the remediation actions or the response activities and also it helps for example for further hunting activities and we can proactively use this kind of iocs to see whether the same threat is existing in in, in other parts of our network um, in this scenario it turns out that this file is benign so what we are doing is basically we are uh, re-enabling the endpoint to to get back to the network and we will restore the quarantined uh, file as well what you can see on the endpoint is the file appearing again and the network traffic is is enabled and uh, now let's see one scenario where we are eliminating the manual steps this is just for the sake of demonstrating how quickly you can react on malicious file incident that's it so yes um I would like to thank to all the attendees and all to the presenters as well. Thank you very much, Tudor. Thank you very much, Norbert, as well. And um, I really hope we can meet soon on, 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 on the next webinar, for example, or, or even at, at person. In person, hopefully. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. See you soon and have a nice day further. See you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.